I request Dr. Apurva Mukherjee, who is one of our course directors, to introduce chairperson of this session and also the clinical issue which would be discussed this morning. Dr. Apurva Mukherjee, please. Thank you, Dr. Amul Banerjee, our uh, Dean of West Bengal ICP. I sincerely thank everybody to pick up one of the very important topic, which is a real problem, particularly in rural areas. And we do have a lot of experiences associated with this venomous snake bite. Sincerely thank our speaker, Professor Somitra Ghosh, who is now the professor at IPGMAR SSKM Hospital, Kolkata, a real, real master in internal medicine to discuss the different aspects associated with hospital management of snake bite. Uh, today is a, a very interesting uh, topic, the uh, neglected tropical disease. Uh, particular snake bite, and it is very much important, particularly in the Mofasal areas, those who are practicing in the Mofasal areas and the rural areas, uh, how to manage a snake bite and what are the uh, tips of these and what are the principle of management of AVS and others that is most important. And for this, we have a, a learned speaker uh, already introduced by uh, Professor Mukherjee to Dr. Somitra Ghosh. So Mitra Ghosh is a really a learned person, is a good academician and good clinician, and he needs no introduction in the API forum. And he is also our government, I mean, uh, ICP members of the central body. And he is one of the pioneers uh, to formulate the protocol of snake bite uh, in the government of India. And that is uh, totally unknown to many of the API members. Uh, rather, he is much famous in obesity uh, specialist, but he is a um, good, uh, uh, I mean, he is a pioneer member in the protocol formation of snake bite. I hope uh, we have chosen a good clinic, I mean, speaker for this topic. I now request uh, Professor Somitra Ghosh uh, to start his deliberation. Over to you, Dr. Swamitra Ghosh, please. Uh, thank you, the chairperson, Professor Ghosh. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Mukherjee, for giving a very good introduction, which actually I do not, uh, I mean, uh, worthy of. And thank you, Professor Amol Banerjee, Professor Arjun Sarkar, and all these dignitaries, and the seniors, the stalwarts, our mentors, for giving me this opportunity to talk in front of this August gathering, this particularly these, uh, I mean, postgraduates who are present in this meeting uh, to present uh, a very important topic that is snake bite. As our chairperson said, that it is one of the most neglected, uh, I mean, uh, tropical disease, which actually is uh, not much attention is given because more number of deaths occur per year due to snake bite in our country than in HIV. Still, HIV gets a lot of focus but snake bite do not get much of focus in a agricultural country like India, where many poor people live in the countryside where snake bite is rampant. And it is such an accident which occurs so suddenly that a person who was absolutely hale and hearty goes to the work from home and comes back with a severe disaster, which can lead to death more frequently. So, in this background, actually more than a lack of bite per year in India and surely more than 10,000 deaths per year and it may lead to almost 50,000 also. And West Bengal is one of the states in one of the big four states in India where snake bite is rampant. This Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, the other three states where this snake bite are very important. So it has many disability, which is important which actually goes on after the bite occurs or after the immediate management is done. In West Bengal, government hospitals record says it is more than 18,000 victims per year. And the initiative was taken in India in 2010 and National 
the rural health mission actually undertook a snake bite protocol in 2009 and that is the world's first protocol world's first india was the leader because india is a country where the snake bite is more frequent and the most important venomous snakes basically reside in india though the most important books are written by the i mean us people this harrison's principle of internal medicine 17th edition whole scenario was changed after they came to 2006 in india this picture this is the robert norris who writes this chapter in harrison textbook of medicine he is not a physician he is a surgeon he has a hobby of catching snakes this is uh, mrs uh, i mean bob norris this is ian de simpson who came from uk to india he is an herpetologist and actually gave a very important leadership in this formation of this protocol in india pakistan bangladesh sri lanka etc so with these i mean a few words i will start these snakes of bengal particularly these big four snakes of bengal because the doctors are not very good in identifying snakes because many do not have a rural background and if they have they were so busy with the books they never could identify the snakes so these are the one of the big four the world's deadliest snake most venomous snake in the world and that is in bengali called chandrabora that is in i mean medical literature called the russell's viper and in i mean this name is actually vipera russelli and you can easily see this this chandro means this moon and moon like this imprint on the skin with the scales this is a beautiful snake this does not have any hood it lives in these big fields in this i mean other areas and the breeding time is the rainy season and before this rainy season this is the time the api has chosen the beautiful topic particularly in this time when snake bite after this hibernation in the winter snake bite comes to the hospital very frequently and this is soft scale viper in bengal it is called bali bora because they live in these sand areas and it is called echis carinatus in rajasthan madhya pradesh maharashtra and different parts of up uttaranchal this i mean uh, snake is very common you can see this short, like short, short, short tooth like appearance in the scale and that is why it is called soft scale viper and this is uh, i mean not very frequently uh, seen in west bengal but it is also common and this viper they are known for these hemotoxic features they can cause local swelling but not always but mostly they are famous for this coagulopathy renal failure and that is why it is called a hemotoxic the gum bleeding, ecchymosis, intracranial bleed, finally leading to this pituitary insufficiency. It is very, I mean, common. And other kinds of, all kinds of bleeding and the hemotoxic features, including myocardial, uh, including myotoxic features, this rhabdomyolysis, all can be seen. And renal failure is almost a characteristic feature of this Russell's viper. So if we see this kind of bleeding at the local site or systemic areas like ecchymosis, like this, and local swelling and this renal failure and sometimes neurotoxic features because these Russell's viper in India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, they can produce neurotoxic features. In other parts of this world, they usually do not produce because same snake may have different kinds of, I mean, this venom composition in the amino acid because of their food pattern. So in these areas, if you see this combination, definitely it is Russell's viper. In the, on the other side, it is crate. This is in Bengali commonly called Chiti Shap. And this crate family may have this common crate, like Bangara Ceruleus. It can have this banded crate. In Bengal, it is called Shankhachur Shap. This is Bangas fasciatus. And this is called this Wals Synth Crate or Bangas Sindaras Sindaras. And you can just see in this common crate, there are dotted paired lines. And these scales are all hexagonal scales. And this common crate does not have a ridge over the back. On the contrary, this banded crate or this, I mean, uh, uh, this uh, shankhachur have a good ridge on the back. It's a triangular shape. And these bands are all thick and alternately colored. And here, the wall scene crate, which is characteristically found more in, I mean, Midnapur and Hugli, this wall synth crate is not up to the name of this. They can just write over the wall. It is the name after the uh, synth wall, and it, it is very, very much seen. So these are, it has, it does not have these paired lines, 
it has single lines only so these are the i mean common features of this crate easily you can under undertake and this is this i mean was seen crate as i have under uh, undertaken and these neurotoxic features small muscles are affected first and the small muscles are affected first that's why the facial muscles orbicular is ocular muscles internal ocular muscles they are actually started i mean affected first so descending type of paralysis starting with ptosis of thermoplasia numbness of the lips and the gum and salivation because of the poor deglutition neck muscle weakness and finally they can lead to respiratory distress and finally this neuromuscular weakness of this type to respiratory failure is the final common pathway of death in such patients this cobra and this cobra may have different kinds of i mean presentations is spectacle naja naja you can see this go khura means the gorur khur mane this has a so i mean horseshoe like i mean presentation u shaped presentation this spectacle because this i mean has a similarity like the spectacle this is monocle this is naja cautia and this is patternless naja naja no i mean i mean pattern is there on this face and this is the most cinematographic snake in this i mean we can whatever snake we see in cinema these kind of snakes can give pose up to 1 hour and they can move with the camera they cannot hear they can see and they can feel the vibration and they just move and give a pose for almost 1 hour so almost all cinemas use this i mean cobras in their part and this is naja naja or the spectacle cobra this is naja cautia or this keute in bengali and this has this neurotoxic profound neurotoxic features and they have profound local necrosis all kinds of blisters necrosis so if we see these two then it is cobra you do not need to see the snake as such and no bleeding occurs because it is not hemotoxic and that way and it does not cause renal failure so only these neurotoxic features and this local necrosis two features are there no bleeding no renal failure so practical classification all these books written by these foreigners they have a difficult i mean uh, i mean classification but if we simply classify this we can just classify as hemotoxic and neurotoxic it can be called viper or elapid so chandrabora is a classically the hemotoxic one and these elapids or neurotoxics can be divided into cobra and cret cret is chitri and purely neurotoxic and this cobra can have local necrosis and neurotoxicity they can be monocle or they can be spectacle so caute and gokura so these are the four big snakes chandrabora keute gokura and chitri so all these i mean snakes i mean those I, we, we treat with this anti snake venom they can have this anti venin properties of this big force so we do not have this anti venin properties in this i mean polyvalent asv which is available in india only these four things are there so if the features are there so there is bleeding manifestation there is renal failure there is local necrosis at the same time neurotoxicity together so if we do not see the snake or if we do not identify then definitely it is russell's viper we we identify this snake by the clinical features on the bed side this is the most important approach the what is to be treated and how to treat because clinical features will say which snake has bitten the victim and on the contrary if this hemotoxic and the nephrotoxic is gone only local features and neurotoxicity is there definitely it is cobra so it is easily identifiable even by an intern so if this local features is gone only neurotoxicity remains then definitely it is easy to understand that it is a crate or the chitti which has bitten the victim so when the victim comes to the hospital what is the responsibility of the doctors who are treating so on arrival and diagnosis responsibility so our time begins from here when this so it is very important because when there is a snake bite it is almost equal to a multiple poisoning because multiple poisoning it can cause neurotoxicity hemotoxicity renal failure any single poison which we call poison like this organophosphorus and other thing they actually affect the single system is neuromuscular junctions etc etc but here multiple organs and they can cause rhabdomyolysis they can cause pituitary failure they can cause adrenal failure they can cause renal failure they can cause hemolysis so many things and they can cause multiple trauma because in 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 road traffic accident what happens there is bleeding 
there is rhabdomyolysis, there is trauma, there is volume loss. So everything occurs together in snake bite. So we should not take snake bite as a very ordinary thing and we should be very important. And this is a very important topic. And the most important equipment to deal with this snake bite is time. As in myocardial infarction, we calculate dot to needle time. Here also, we'll have to calculate the dot to needle time if we want to give ASV according to the indications. So most important time is the most important parameter we'll have to keep in mind. We'll have to very fast. We cannot be just callous and just waste our time. So the key question, three questions, when are you bitten by the snake? Because how much time has already been elapsed? That is very important. What were you doing? Because that can give this habitus pattern of the snake and what kind of snake it can be. Because the person is so frightened, he cannot often identify the snake. According to the description, we just cannot rely on these things. And what fast type? This is very important because in India, there are varied kinds of fast type which can cause vomiting, which can cause local swelling, which can cause some irritation. They give, they kick, they cut, they suck, they give, they give many things which can cause itself vomiting. So the person is frightened. So adrenergic overtone is already there. And all these kinds of local fast aids can cause some kinds of clinical alteration of the pattern. So we'll have to key questions and we'll have to judge accordingly what can be the important thing. And the next important thing, which we have just gave 20 minute whole blood clotting test. This has changed the whole scenario of the snake bite management. Because if we want to send the blood for coagulation profile, for D dimer assay, for other things, PT, I mean, uh, BT, then it will kill the time and we'll actually lose the scenario, we'll lose the, lose the victim. And the most reliable bedside test, the number one test for the Viper bite, it has only role in the Viper hemotoxic bite because in neurotoxic bite, it has no role. So this glass test, this test tube, so four criteria is important. It should be a new one. It should not be an used one because this coagulation, this, I mean, all these, I mean, proteins, the fibrins will only be attached to this glass tube when it is clean, new, dry, and glass test tube. It should not be a fiber test tube because in, uh, in hospitals, sometimes these fiber test tubes are available, which are sometimes overused before, may not be dry. So these are the four adjectives which I have to qualify for putting these, I mean, 20 minutes whole blood clotting test, new, clean, dry, and glass test tube. So every 30 minutes for the first two hours and then hourly thereafter for this. So on assessment, after just doing this, we'll have to give these local symptoms and signs, whether there is any fang mark. Fang marks, if there is, does not mean that there is envenomation. There can be dry bites because the tip, this opening of the, I mean, I, I mean, the fang is not on the tip, it is just inside. So after tweak, it may not inject the venom. So it may be a dry bite. That is very important. It can cause local pain, bleeding, bruising, blistering, local inflammation in the form of swelling, redness, heat. Some, there may be some infection, abscess formation, necrosis. If the patient comes late, limb node enlargement in the local areas and the lymphangitis are the very important test. So we'll have to see actually all systems, general systems like pulse, BP, et cetera, cardiovascular, basically whether there is any arrhythmia, pancreatic any bradycardia, heart block, or the BP is very low, bleeding on the clotting disorders, particularly for the biped, neurological features very important, particular neuromuscular junction or tests, and this renal important, skeletal muscle breakdown, abdomyolysis, I've already called that this is a very important feature of the biped. Why? Because subconjunctival hemorrhage, sub this chemosis, et cetera, maybe important the vitreous hemorrhage, this is very important, and endocrine, particularly these adrenal and the pituitary are very vulnerable for hemorrhage, and damage and that that can contribute to the hypotension you have to keep in mind so it's a all system assessment so this is the mnemonic so snake bite is the mnemonic so snake means site of the bite examination swelling etc you have to check neurological assessment you have to do anxiety symptoms like cardia fear adrenergic overtone sweating can be the features of this anxiety part also kidney function assessment enlarged glim nodes and glim channels in the local areas bleeding manifestation infection inflammation, tissue necrosis, eye signs, endocrine features. So this is, you'll have to just check all these points as the mnemonic says. It can be just simply the other thing, just local features, 
this i mean site and the snake is the other approach swelling infection inflammation tissue necrosis in large limb nodes is a local area examination and the systemic examination is a snake spontaneous bleeding manifestation neurological assessment anxiety symptoms all systems kidney function assessment eye signs endocrine this is a very important i mean mnemonic which actually we do not forget in a hurry during this examination of this patient so on assessment i will we, we assess bite by we will have to keep in mind the bite by the cret is virtually painless patient often do not give any history sleeping person may not even wake up due to the bite it is almost painless because we cannot see the fang it is very small i mean micro and often it is called occult bite because patient do not give any history often they come like a stroke patient in the early morning we have to keep but this stroke patient is not a upper motor feature it is a neuromuscular junctional feature presence they often refuse any history of snake bite so this is medical legally important you have to keep a note on it and no detectable local signs of envenomation may be seen because there is no local swelling they often refuse that if you if the doctor and here is the importance of this protocol and a systematic approach by the doctor so bite marks may not be very important because often this bite mark there may be a single prick there may be multiple pricks because of the multiple bites because the snake is also affected while the bite and the tourniquet removal is very important if sometimes uh, erroneously they put on tourniquet while they come to the hospital and if we just remove this tourniquet immediately on a single i mean uh, chance then the gas up i mean lymphatic tissue are actually stuck there may go and the venom can go in the systemic circulation and that may precipitate hypotension shock and many other complication so you'll have to know how to remove the tourniquet you can use the bp cup gradually you will lower down the pressure and so so release of this venom may be i mean i mean uh, gradual and because of the tourniquet there may be the swelling the distal part that may be because of this venous return i mean uh, 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 hampered and it is it may not be the reflection of this lymphatic spread of this venom so late onset envenoming is very important and we should not just think that when they come to the hospital the clinical features presented at the time of presentation is everything because sometimes this, it is absorbed and they can present with the late onset envenomation so you we'll have to keep an eye so observation for 24 hours for all kinds of patients whoever is coming to the hospital is mandatory if we think that it is a non venomous snake still 24 hours observation in the hospital is a must we will have to keep in mind so assessment on arrival we will have to check this uh, i mean uh, as professor uh, mukherjee said that airway breathing and circulation is very important this is the avc of any internal medicine approach tetanus toxoid if evidence of bite is there the antibiotics are not routinely used unless there is specific features of i mean infection because sometimes there is local swelling local necrotic changes because of this venom itself not because of infection and no aspirin please because they will contribute contribute to the bleeding manifestation no NSAID please only paracetamol and sometimes you can give tramadol also identify the snake if possible sometimes if they do not bring the snake it is not possible and while they actually are bitten they cannot just go for catching up the snake so it is not possible you have to identify the snake by the clinical features sometimes they bring the snake we we'll have to identify and that is why we have known the characteristic features physical appearances of the snakes depending on the availability is that useful test which is to be done number one is the urine for rbc proteinuria hemoglobinuria or myoglobinuria that is very important if it is a nephrotoxic or hemotoxic snake bite serum urea creatinine is very important potassium is important because if there is hemolysis or rhabdomyolysis potassium goes up if there is renal failure potassium goes up very fast and if possible we can just go up for this hemoglobin pcb platelet p time apt and d dimer but in many laboratories in ct d dimer takes a long time and we cannot think of this d dimer test and in 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 rural areas thanks to covid uh, d dimer has become a very important test now so everybody is now equipped with this d dimer now as well. so now we we'll have to think whether the patient requires ASB or not. That is the first question I will have to answer within minutes. We all know that whatever is available in India, it is a polyvalent. We do not get a monovalent like in US. 
and until there is test for ELISA, monovalent I mean, antivenin is useless. So in India, we can use this polyvalent serum and it can be lyophilized or dry powder or it can be liquid form. Liquid form has a lesser shelf life of two years. Lyophilized or powder form have a higher shelf life of five years. Lyophilized do not need refrigeration in the hospital. And that's why it is preferred in the hospital because sometimes they uh, cannot keep in the, uh, I mean, refrigerator. And liquid can be given immediately. Lyophilized, it has to be reconstituted with the of fluid. And if this fluid is clear, then only it can be given. If this appearance becomes turbid, then it should be discarded. And you will have to keep in mind that this anti snake venin can neutralize only the free flowing venom. So it is a task of neutralization. It is almost like the trituration, like this acid and alkali. So we cannot just expect all clinical features which has been prefixed by the venom activity cannot be reversed by this anti venin. Only the free flowing is neutralized. So what is the indication? Indication is that this systemic envenomation, if there is any strong indication and how to identify this systemic envenomation by 20 minutes whole blood clotting test, if it is positive, current systemic bleeding, if there is spontaneous bleeding, then definitely 20 minute WBCD test is a waste of time because we can see that current systemic bleeding, not from the local site only, systemic bleeding is there. And if there is neurotoxic sign, if there is neurotoxic sign, we should not waste our time with this 20 WBCT because 20 minutes we should not waste. We, we just start action. So this is the absolute indication of this strong indication and the severe current local swelling. Half of the limb in absence of the tunicate, if it is swollen, definitely it is envenomation. And rapidly crossing the joint because all these deep fascia, they are attached with the, I mean, if this, uh, they can cross the joint and they can rapidly cross the joint, then it is a systemic features. And this relative administration criteria, systemic envenomation we can identify if there is hypotension, if there is shock, if there is arrhythmia, if there is dark brown urine, urine in the form of myoglobin urea, severe vomiting or abdominal pain is an indicator or a harbinger of systemic envenomation. And the severe local envenomation, it is very important if there is enlarged local regional lymph nodes and swelling of the digits. If these digits are swollen and basically as there is no, I mean, other kind of circulation is the end, end arterial circulation, we should act very fast because otherwise we may lose the digit. Then the question is how much is to be given? So we, ha we have known these indications, the patient needs ASB, then the question is how much? We'll have to read the small writings of the vial and many doctors actually do not read the what is written on the vial? It is written that this polyvalent, I mean, vial of 10 ml can neutralize Russell's Viper 6 milligram, can neutralize Spectacle Cobra or Gokura Keuta 6 milligram. They can neutralize Common Crate 4.5 milligram, and they can neutralize Soscale Viper by 4.5 milligram. So, this is the constituent of these polyvalent serum. So, we should always think. And these are the common four snakes. If the snake is different than these, all these things, it is a pit viper, it is a something else, uh, then this polyvalent serum will not work. So we keep 10 vials in the first hour. If it is 10 vial, then it is 100 ml. And we know that Russell's viper, which is the most venomous snake, in the hematoxic type, it, this venom sac I mean, attached with their canine can contain 63 plus minus 7 ma milligram of venom usually injected and that range can be 5 to 147 milligram so highest amount of venom which they can contain in their venom sank together if they put all the venom in a single person it can be only 147 so divided by 6 means 25 vials is hardly required so we can think of 30 vials in, in my maximum which is required for a viper bite same and on the on the on the contrary the crate and this neurotoxic bite their sac is very less basically they can contain only a small amount so this amount which is required for this neurotoxic bite is even less we'll have to remember that we do not 
have a lesser dose for children and the pregnant women. We need to give the whole amount because it is a matter of titration of the free flowing venom. If it is a child, snake can bite and this free flowing can venom, even body weight wise, this, I mean, concentration in the child may be even higher. And we'll have to keep in mind, do not go for any skin test with the ASB because finally we'll have to give, if there is any allergic reaction, we'll have to deal with it. So after this initial dose, who requires this repeat dose, how much and when? So in hemotoxic bite, there is six hour rule. If we give one dose of 10 ml, 10 vials, then we cannot repeat within one hour or two hours. We just have to wait for six hours because we'll have to give the liver to regenerate this, I mean, coagulation, coagulation profile proteins, and we'll have to wait for six hours. We'll have to check the requirement by 20 WBCD test, repeat dose six vials, six hourly, and the maximum dose is 30 vials till coagulation normalizes. So we should not cross 30 vials in total. We should repeat every six hourly, six vials. Do not be fast or in haste. And neurotoxic bite, the rule is different. There is no question of coagulation profile synthesis by the liver. We can just wait for one hour or maximum two hours according to the clinical situation from the end of the fast dose, full dose of 10 miles. So clinical assessment is enough. We do not have any biochemical test. And second full dose 10 miles is even given after one hour from the end of this fast administration or after two hours maximum and maximum 20 vials total. So one repeat dose can be given maximum 10 vials. That is very important. And we'll have to keep in mind that for the hemotoxic and for the neurotoxic, the approach is completely different. So victims who arrive late, should the doctor administer ASB? And the answer is current venom activity is, has to be assessed. And that is the final determining thing because only the free flowing venom can be neutralized. If the person comes and there is no free flowing venom, only tissue fixation is there, suppose renal failure is there, we cannot give any ASB because they actually cannot neutralize the free flowing venom and we do not get any, I mean, benefit of giving this WB, I mean, ASB in that person. So we'll have to rely on this 20 WBCT. If coagulopathy is present, then we give ASB and if clotted, treat renal failure by dialysis or else. So we do not, end organ damage cannot be just reversed with this ASB. Only the free flowing venom can be I mean, changed with this titration gain. Now, if it is a neurotoxic bite, can these neurotoxic additions be helpful? This is a very important question because we should buy time and we should alter, support the patient in that way. So if we just think about this neurotoxic bite, then it is neuroparalytic. Means they have, the, in this, this, this is the synaptic gap between these, I mean, uh, the two neuronal junctions. And if we just think of these neurotransmitters in the, new, I mean, binaural junction, we cannot just uh, refute this importance of this acetylcholine. And if we give anticholinesterase inhibitor, then, we can think of this kind of competitive inhibition here. And if we just, uh, I mean, uh, think of this Cobra family or this Kauta and Gokura, these kind of things, they are post-synaptic endonyms. So this venom are fixed in the post-synaptic receptors. So if we increase this acetylcholine level here by giving these cholinesterase inhibitors or this, I mean, then this acetylcholine level is increased and by competitive inhibition, they can be more attached with these receptors and we can have a benefit. So one clinician or a physician immediately can become a magician because patient improves within few minutes in Cobra and in Tautia. But this is not the same in crate by uh, coming to their leg. If we give neostigmine, we can consider of neostigmine because other endrophonium and other things are not available in India so easily, particularly in the rural areas. So we have kept this neostigmine in our approach. This neostigmine, three ampules means 1.5 milligram. It should be given IM, not IV, because if you give IV, 
patient starts twitching immediately and with atropine atropine can be given first because we do not want this mascarinic activity we only want this nicotinic activity which causes neuroparalysis so we'll have to review for one hour and we'll have to objectively measure by the bedside single breath count this is a very important test for this neurotoxic bite duration of the hand elevation either by, by but if it is initially if you say 10 seconds and if it improves to 30 seconds then duration of hand elevation is this neuromuscular junctional test and duration of the upward gauge this is also important if the patient asks the upward gauging then you can just measure the time and we can assess whether neuromuscular junctional function is improving or not and most effective in the post synaptic bite like in cobra and i mean this Keute and Gokuda. So, neostigmine maintenance can be given and it can be 25 to 50 microgram per kg per hour. In children, it can be 0 0.01 milligram, or means 10 microgram also. So, atropine one ampule given for 5 to such, 5 to 6 amples of 0.5 neostigmine. In that ratio, you can give atropine in the IV infusion continuous and you can give this neostigmine also in the infusion if you think about that if you think that neostigmine is beneficial for the initial few hours if the patient improves improves rapidly and the patient does not improve actually we cannot rely on this neostigmine for a pretty long time over days an hourly review of this single breath count duration of the upward gauge and duration of the hand elevation is very important but what happens in the crate family in the crate it is a pre-synaptic environment so this granulation of this acetylcholine is not there and this it is no, no acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction so if we give a cholinesterase inhibitor then there will be no benefit at all and that is why in plate bite this kind of neurotoxic support is usually not beneficial but we should take a chance we should at least give a trial if we give benefit then it is okay because in russell's viper it is mostly presynaptic, but we give a trial with these neurotoxic additions to neurostigmine. If it is not beneficial, then it is okay, we leave it. But if it is beneficial, then we should not just think, uh, we should give this support to the patient. So ASB reaction is a very important uh, aspect because we uh, published a I mean, paper in uh, 2009 and one, we, we, we just show, sh showed that only 2% patient developed mild antivenin hypersensitivity. No anaphylaxis, no bronchospasm are recorded in any patient. This is the commonest excuse of the doctors in the periphery not to treat the patient because if there is ASB reaction, the party may be very angry on the doctors. They, they do not want it. So they sometimes by deciding not to treat, they kill time. And we should not kill time because this dope to needle time is very important to save the life of the patient. And we should keep in mind that it is not an anaphylactic reaction, which is mediated by IgE. It is actually an anaphylactoid reaction, which is mediated by IgA. And that is why it usually comes after 20 minutes, not immediately after, uh, as we see in IgE mediated anaphylactic reaction within seconds. It comes usually around 20 minutes. And ASB start for the first symptom of itching, urticaria, second chills, fever nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal cramp, tachycardia, hypotension, bronchospasm, anti-angioedema, etc. We'll have to treat this patient with adrenaline. And adrenaline 0.5 milligram has to be given intramuscular. And if required, we can give the second dose after 10 to 15 minutes and maximum three doses can be repeated. We should not just over rely on this atropine because that can cause the other hemodynamic changes itself. Onset of action, if it is intramuscular, then it is eight minutes. If it is given subcutaneous, it is 34 minutes. And that's why intramuscular route is preferred. It is never given IV. And steroidal support, we know the steroid has a high, I mean, uh, onset of action. They do not act with before four hours to six hours. And actually, if you give steroid, they do not actually alter the situation. And minutes are also given. And ASB has to be restarted if it is indicated immediately after that with the supports. And we cannot stop and just hold these ASB for good. So this heparin and botropes, they are contraindicated because it is a DIC-like situation. And in fact, this botropes has been synthesized from this anti, I mean, snake venom, 
Snake venom has given rise to this botropes, and actually they can cause the similar botropes acts like the snake venom to cause this bleeding uh, stoppage and the coagulation because that causes DIC diffuse uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation. Hypotension has to be dealt by, as like because the hemorrhage, venom induced vasodilation, direct effect on the heart, acute pituitary and adrenal insufficiency, everything can cause hypotension and shock. It is treated by fluid plasma expander and this pressure isn't support and in appropriate doses. No ASB while the patient is on ventilator. In neurotoxic bite, if the patient is on ventilator, do not waste this ASB because that is not required because that will actually after some time, this neck venom, venom is also is a formulation with amino acid, it's a protein that will, it will be actually uh, uh, goes out of this body after some time. In crate bite, it takes longer time to improve. Surgical deployment of the necrotic tissue may be needed. Fasciotomy, if compartmental pressure is more than 40 millimeter of mercury, and we know that then it is called compartment syndrome, and high compartmental pressure can cause pain out of proportion, pain on passive stretching, pulselessness, pallor, paresthesia, and paralysis. All P's are there, and that suggests this compartmental pressure is more than 40, then we can take this fasciotomy. And supportive therapy in case of renal failure has to be given in accordance because if this renal failure is already there, then we'll have to give support or these other renal replacement therapies as per protocol. So renal failure is a common complication of hyperbite because of the direct nephrotoxicity and can develop very early in Russell's bite. If we give ASB within one hour or two hours, then also we can have this renal failure because it is a direct nephrotoxicity. So early giving ASB cannot prevent ARF. So intravascular hemolysis is also important for development of this renal failure. And this the DIC, hypotension, this pre-renal, renal, everything contributes to this renal failure. And parameters for referral to the dialysis is very important. Creatinine in more than five, urea more than 200, hyperkalemia, and declining or no urine output is very important for referral to the nephrology friends. Spontaneous bleeding stop. This is very important after this ASB administration usually after 30 minutes. Coagulation restored usually with the, after six hours. Neurotoxic improvement usually within 30 minutes. And neurotoxic due to the crate, longer time to improve. And shock, BP may increase by one hour if we give ASB in time. So this is very important. So if we just keep in mind the time milestones, then after 20 minutes, what we can expect? 20 WP. 20 minute WBCT, average time for the onset of ASB reaction is one hour length of time for the ASB administration. So we should administer ASB over one hour. Length of time of the neostigmine test. If we give neostigmine, we have to wait for one hour. Period of referred view of the neurotoxic worsening. If it is a neurotoxic bite, we have to watch for one hour if there for a review. And for the six hours rule, period of review for the blood coagulation parameters in the hemotoxic. So just milestones are 20 minutes, one hour, six hours. So if there is any ASB reaction, usually comes within 20 minutes. You have to keep in mind. So referral, referral is actually meant who are actually working in the, I mean, tertiary care center. Referral is not actually for them, but those who are working in the primary or the secondary level, this, this, this is the all about the state by equipment, only the ASB, so neostigmine, 20 WC to the test tube, this and the one steroid, uh, I mean, uh, important one antihistamine, this paracetamol, airway. This is this, these are only these things are required. Nothing more is important. And referral criteria, as we already we have told that the hyperbite, bleeding and the renal impairment, neurotoxic bite, respiratory distress, and for surgical deployment of the vasectomy. And these are only required for the primary care and the secondary level working doctors in the periphery. So if the referral has to be done from the primary center to a tertiary care center. What are the important things? They must do to perform 20 minute WBCT test, established if severe current local swelling is there. If yes, administer fast 10 vials of ASB. If 20 WBCT is incoagulable or severe current swelling because the patient life will be saved, stabilize for anaphylaxis with IM adrenaline and refer to the higher center if bleeding and the renal failure continues, even after all these things. But if anybody refers without doing these basic things, then it is not good 
it is beyond ethics and in neurotoxic as is visible neurotoxic signs establish if severe current local swelling is there if yes then administer 10 miles of asb stabilize for anaphylaxis if i am adrenaline new stigment test has to be done repeat dose if required after one to two hours inability to neck lift signals respiratory failure and patient has to be referred for airway support ventilator etc after doing this thing so all these basic things has to be done in any periphery by any doctor working anywhere now i will discuss about this medical legal aspect because snake bite is a medical legal issue and basically we often do not take care of all such small things should we go for the post mortem in all deaths due to snake bite this answer is often varied sometimes say it is post mortem is a must somebody says it is not a must so answer is pm or the post mortem is not mandatory in snake bite deaths unless the cause of death is uncertain if the doctor writes that the death due to venomous snake bite then post mortem is not required doctor can write this in kolkata jurisdiction post mortem is not done for snake bite cases by the government order by the kolkata police in rest of west bengal post mortem is done in snake bite deaths for compensation to the victim family because patient victim family they get 50000 to 60000 compensation from the dm office and for that this pm report has is a mandatory thing so if there is a clear documentation of the cause of death due to venomous snake bite then it is they get the compensation so cause of death has to be very clear by the doctor so the doctor who are working in the tertiary care or the primary or whatever if we can write the death certificate pm is not required but you will have to be very clear that it is death due to venomous snake bite has to be clear and not death due to unknown bite if you write that death due to unknown bite then post mortem is a must as this will deny 50000 rupees or more compensation to the victim family and that is why post mortem is required otherwise it is not required but what is the consensus on this first step this is very important because india is a country where uh, i mean versatility variety is very important everybody does and everybody claims that he is the uh, i mean correct so snake bite it is inevitable in india because snakes carry many positive roles in agricultural country like this so this uh, wood cutting grass cutting or, or this uh, burning working barefoot fruit harvesting they often uh, walk without torch in the dark is very important so which is in inapplicable first time which we should not recommend is the prayers ojas snake stones tourniquets pressure immobilization peacock feather we should not recommend because these are all bad things electrical therapy ice therapy or cryotherapy cutting suction local infiltration of asb this mechanical suction these are all bogus things do not encourage as a portion of this modern medicine so tourniquets they increase the chance of ischemia necrosis and neurotoxic blockade embolism and vasodilation and if there is delay patient often basically thinks i mean false sense of security is there so they do not work so cutting suction electrical therapy pressure immobilization all are gone so this is not to be done so what is to be done the first important first aid is do it right that is the mnemonic right means reassure the patient immobilize as like a fractured limb because we all know that this venom is transmitted by the lymphatics and lymphatics are pumped by the muscle activity so we we'll have to immobilize the concerned limb we should not have any muscular activity in that limb so lymphatics will not pump and it will not proceed further so progression can be delayed if this simply it is almost like this a, a fractured limb so they they should not be frightened they should not run to the hospital because that actually creates more problem so somebody else should carry the patient to the hospital get to the hospital immediately and tell the doctor of any systemic symptom and for that doctor must be very confident so this national protocol a few words is vidnapur medical college played the most important role in the national protocol formulation because snake bite research unit in the first country unit in vidnapur medical college which actually took place in 2006 first october and this vidnapur medical college produced the data in this international journal and this treatment of asb decreased by 12.6 percent asb requirement decreased by 66 percent and death decreased by 35 percent so the cost 
was saved by 59 lakh in that particular year in one medical college and 35 percent life was more saved and it was produced in an international journal and that formed this i mean basis of this international i mean publication of the national protocol formation in this in this ministry of health and family welfare i mean i, I consulted us i was so one of the three doctors uh, other than this Ian simpson sat the patient from all india institute mahadevan from jipmar and rajindiran from madras medical college was the other doctors present in the national protocol formation meeting and this national consultation meeting was actually took over because of this i mean results from this Bindapur Medical College and this National Rural Health Mission took this as national protocol. So I think few questions may arise after this discussion. But before that, we, if we can take over with the kind permission of the chair, we have few case studies. The case one, 9:30 a.m. A 10-year-old female arrives. So young patient awakened at night. Hot she shook a black snake with white stripes leaving her slave taken. It was not painful. Parents were worried in the morning. Took her to the hospital. And two small punctures in the left foot. No signs of envenomation found. What is to be done? So as there is no direct interaction by verbal communication, we are just continuing. So patient complains of tiredness at 10, 20, 11, 20. So after some time. So maybe after two hours almost. And complaints of double vision. And that is the first weakening of this intraocular muscles, I mean, uh, 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 ocular muscles, external ocular muscles. And this is the beginning of this uh, small muscles weakness, and this is a neurotoxic snake. Oil. So immediately it was diagnosed after within five minutes after reconstitution of this lyophilized or just cooking five minutes, we started ASB within um, 10 vials ASB given. At 12, 19 means after 24 minutes, patient complains of cold and starts severing vomits at temperature, what is to be done? The ASB was stopped, taken care by atropine injection, and these ASB started again at 128. So after one hour, ASB was completed. This is very important, we should not stop it. So this is about this neurotoxic bite where actually there is no, I mean, history of snake bite, just on the clinical features and these uh, everything on early suspicion we have given. This case two, at 6 10 pm early in the morning 23 year male arrives felt stabbing pain in the calf while walking in the evening evening it is evening i did not see what caused pain patient has not seen what has caused that stabbing severe pain developed within 20 minutes of bite swelling along the calf victim has tourniquet in the flesh victim is sweating heavily at 10 6 10 20 WBC it started, it is coagulable. At 6 40, again, it is coagulable. After 30 minutes, we repeated. And 7 10, it becomes incoagulable and gum bleeding starts. So, within five minutes, means as time is required for reconstitution and preparation of that, 7 15, 10 miles of ASB commenced. Patient restless, develops articaria. At immediately after 18 minutes, you see this after 18 minutes. We stopped for a while, took care about this uh, atropine, uh, 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 sorry, uh, adrenaline and other things, support. And at 9 p.m., so we took just a break of 30 minutes or so, ASB is completed. So 42 minutes was actually, uh, 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 was there. So we completed. 10 p.m., swelling no, now crosses knee joint. Patient passes red is urine. So progression is still there. So still, we did not give the second dose of ASB because we will have to wait for six months. In 3 p.m., 20 WBCT, again done. It is incoagulable. Six vials of ASB given. So after the completion at 4, four o'clock, so we will have to repeat the test at 10 o'clock again, and then we can act. So we cannot be just be very haste as the patient has developed radius urine or the swelling has crossed. So we will have to wait for some time. So this is case three. 18 year old male comes, pounds to us in the morning, drooling on saliva, patient is paralytic, shallow respiration, and patient family members thought that it is a stroke in young. So no history of bite, no swelling, no puncture mark. Single breath count is only five. 
So doctor is confident that it is a neuromuscular thing. It is not an upper motor type or it is a stroke. And as we know, the neurotype muscular type of acute presentation can only be happening in the neurotoxic bite and in say uh, some uh, botulinum toxin uh, presentation. Otherwise, no such acute presentation of neurotoxic uh, presentation can happen. So we should give ASB. So at 540, within few minutes, 10 miles of ASB commenced. You give a note in the paper because even they do not recommend as it is in the national protocol, doctors are confident. They can do the whatever is to be done. Give a note in the BHT and start ASB. C ampoule neostigmine IM with one ampoule atropine IV is given. 6, 10, one hour. Patient improves. Single breath count is 12. Should we go for this ASB very next? No, we'll have to wait for one hour at least. At 7.40, one hour from the end of the second, I mean, first oh, whole series, single breath count 15, not enough. So we started 10 vials of ASV. It is the repeat dose. Whole 10 vials, not 6 vials, is repeated. So this is about this uh, different kinds of scenario as I just uh, uh, could think of. So if the questions comes, I'm ready to answer all these things. So this protocol or this approach to consensus nationwide protocol, which is the first in the world, is a very realistic one, is a very situation specific, and it is a detailed guideline. So you can have all such nitty gritties of any special situation in every situation. It is easy to remember, to carry out and to monitor. Even the nurse on the GDS can take care of all these 20 WBCT. And if you just formulate a team in your hospital, then it is perfectly matches a poor country like India. There are no, no, no big things like this, whatever the Western textbook tells about us. 20 minute WBCT has made the great difference. ASV administration criteria and doses are rational, simple to remember, and repeat those guidelines are very simple and realistic. And we should not waste these ASVs by giving plenty of 100 vials in a patient. ASV reactions are managed confidently, much more successfully by the primary doctors because it can be managed by the sisters even. And duration of the hospital stay has decreased significantly. This is very important. Uniform approach instead of physical one. If we think about these diarrhea deaths, the simple protocol of giving the ORAS and not to treat the diarrhea by antibiotics and other things, antivirals, by just don't lose the volume by this ORAS formulation, we could save thousands of lives in a poor country like India. And the person did not get the Nobel Prize, but he was actually supposed to get the Nobel Prize in since then. And this simple protocol in this patient actually can save many patients, simple protocol. So this is a standard treatment guideline, which has been a quick reference guide. It was published in 2016, actually 22nd December in 2015, if, I mean, a national ICMR conducted a meeting and just formulated all these things. And you can go through it, and all these PGTs can take this immense help from this national, I mean, uh, the management of the snake bite quick reference guide is a government of India publication, and you can take help of this in your day to day life. So, thank you very much. I, I think uh, with this, uh, I mean, uh, class, we can be easily identify these snakes. And if we, we, we do not see the snake, we can see the clinical features and we can identify if we see the footprints of a tiger, it is not required to see the tiger. And this hunter can see that this tiger has gone this side because this hunter can easily take the inference by the footprints of the tiger. And he can even just think of whether the tiger is hungry or not. If one actually reads the story of other good hunters, uh, then it is possible. And here also this simple protocol, when to give, how much to give, when to repeat, when to give the support, when to refer, when to give these other things, for what is to be done with the anxiety, what is to be done with the pain, what is to be done with the antibiotic, when the surgeon requires, I mean, what is to be done in the pregnant woman, what is to be done with the children, all are clear. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to interact with these young friends of postgraduates and these stalwarts of API, all these mentors of this API, all these reputed teachers are here. So I am thankful to all for this. So any questions can be, dealt by the chairperson and if chairperson permits then i can also be
I mean, giving this. So, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Somitra Ghosh, for your nicely and elaborated discussion about the snake bite. Uh, I really thankful that you have mentioned in all aspects of snake bite. I think there should be any should not be any question about that, but still there is some questions. I really uh, appreciate that you have mentioned about the big four snakes. That that is most important. We actually uh, identification of the snakes. When many a time the uh, patient party bring the snake, and that will be helpful to diagnose the I mean which type of snakes is there, and and for the treatment also. And mention about the wind of opportunity, and that is most important. It is here is that three, not three hours or three months or three days. It is time is a, as quick as possible. That is the most important that you have mentioned. The time is the most important factor. And uh, you have mentioned the in your two case studies the dose is the same in the children and also adult. It is the ten vial and different presentation, clinical presentation of the snake bite. And here is the patient may come with the pain, abdomen. Patient may come with the respiratory distress uh, to the ENT department, and patient may come with a stroke-like presentation. And so, it is a good clinician who can differentiate the snake bite, particularly crate bite, which may present uh, many a times a late, and and that's why I'm in a different types of uh, presentation. Hope you have understood all the things. And now uh, there is a question uh, in the chat box. Uh, 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 if uh, initial 20 minutes of WBCT whole blood CT is negative, uh, should we repeat that? You have mentioned uh, about the six hours. So when to administer neostigmine maintenance and for how long? Tomitro, so about the next question. So, it's a question. Uh, what is there in the chat box? I can read. I'm trying to give the answer uh, as 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 it has come. As uh, the chairperson has uh, selected the first question as this 20 WBCT, uh, and I can just uh, read that question. That sir, when to administer maintenance dose of neostigmine and for how long? If the patient is in ventilator, do not give. If the patient improves after one hour, then think of continuing that. And if the patient does not, I mean, uh, no improvement is there, stop it. And if this uh, maintenance, if the patient improves a lot, so we actually repeat this ASD. So we are repeating after past one hour, we are giving the first 10 vials. Then we are waiting for one hour or two hour maximum. Then we are giving the second. So it is almost the four hours. So we can take help of this, I mean, for only few hours, the few 12 hours or so, Otherwise, it is not required for giving for days. Uh, we have seen that in, 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 in credit bite, they are giving these new stigmine for days. It is not required. Actually, Next okay. question. And actually uh, Sumitra, and uh, yes. really you have mentioned about the new stigmine and atropine, and you have mentioned it that atropine followed by new stigmine. That is most important. Yes. Uh, Mascarinic function has to be blocked. Uh, we only it, want new picotinic uh, function. It is you, you just memorized it and remember is as a and not in a atropine followed by new stick bin a first, new stick bin, a first. Uh, so a first a should be uh, IV and new stick bin is IM that's most important next uh, what will be the treatment of neurological features of hyperbite actually you have mentioned about the uh, crate bite and also hyperbite hyperbite is mainly a hematotoxic and crate bite is a neurotoxic, but viper bite is a both hematological and a neurological. So they have uh, critically as he has mentioned the, what is the neurological symptoms of viper bite. So neurological symptoms that is in the it is found only in the Russell's viper, and that is classically in India, particularly this this part of India, the eastern part and the southern part, because these Sri Lankan snakes. And the Bangladesh snakes, or the Russell's viper has uh, reported such, such kind of neurological features, and that is mostly pre uh, synaptic, and that they do not improve much with this uh, neostigmine support. But as we are giving ASD, after some time, they improve of their own uh, with time. They are actually not as severe like in crate. 
they are actually uh, rather milder because whatever be the features of this uh, i mean russell's viper these hemotoxic features always dominate the scenario the renal failure dominate the scenario neurotoxic features are only present but that is not as marked as in seen in crate bite so we do not need any special thing for that but we should not uh, 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 question also we should give the benefit of doubt to the patient so we should have a challenge with the neospigmin if the patient improves but we should not uh, rely much on this we should not use for days we should only use for the initial few hours if the patient improves that is okay if that uh, we discard okay thank you uh, another question is about the post alkaline diuresis and calcium post alkaline diuresis is a important feature for renal uh, salvage uh, for any renal injury we can have this post alkaline or fad uh, we call it fad post alkaline diuresis this is not only for the snake bite other toxins and other things we can have this post alkaline diuresis we can uh, go for it that is yeah, actually uh, no, is there any role of preventive role is for actually, hematotoxic uh, snake bite not much of that but we uh, if any venom or any toxin we can have this if anybody but we should not waste our time because at the very beginning we should do what is to be done first if we have enough time enough manpower then we can go for it we should not rely much on it but it is an well accepted protocol of renal salvage in such situation where toxins and venoms cause renal injury we can uh, go for it but we should have rely much on these asbs when it is required and other things volume pressure agents because pre renal factors as well as this direct neurotoxic i mean uh, sorry nephrotoxic direct action so uh, i mean renal and pre renal both factors are there and we can take care of them very importantly but we should not deny this benefit of this forced alkaline dialysis or fad we can undertake this so role of calcium gluconate in a crate bite calcium gluconate uh, has been uh, uh, suggested by few because uh, this uh, action potential action and this uh, this can be undertaken but we should rely much on this i mean neurotoxic support with neostigmin calcium gluconate as a membrane stabilization may not be that useful but if we think of this giving you can give it but many things are there which we can undertake but we should not be just obsessed about those things which can be obviated or which can be bypassed because the primary things most important things has to be done fast that is very important so if we give calcium gluconate in a neurotoxic bite that will not cause any harm and we can undertake this and there is a reference in the quick reference of the qrg in 2016 also so in the chat box there is a same question you have already answered it and another question is the is the role of fap in a hematotoxic bite so the question uh, begins with this interval of asb administration and neurotoxic and hematotoxic bite is different why because in a hematotoxic bite when there is alteration in the coagulation profile that asb neutralizes this venin venom it cannot generate this coagulation proteins which is actually synthesized by the liver so we we'll have to give the body to regenerate these proteins because coagulation pro profile can be best restored when these coagulation proteins are synthesized by the liver so we will have to give 6 hours time at least for that before that if the patient profusely bleeds and this coagulation profile is altered then we can take the help of the ffp in useful um, doses because ffp has the ready i mean coagulation proteins so we can think of that if there is no contraindication of giving if there is profuse bleeding and within this time zone but we should not waste this ffp uh, sorry 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 we should not waste this anti asb anti snake venin within this window period if we give in a hurried way that will not cause greater effect because we we'll have to give what is to be done in a i mean uh, i mean uh, i mean a manner according to the protocol because overdose will not give more benefit so uh, and role of ppp i have already discussed maintenance dose of neostigmin discussed and this if there is so, any role of no. calcium gluconate discussed no, no, another question is if initial 20 minute wbc is negative 
and clinical suspicion is high. So you have mentioned the time, but when to repeat 20 minutes WCT, if the clinical Sir, uh, suspicion uh, is very high. There is uh, some absolute indication. 20 WBC test is not required if there is obvious bleeding, systemic bleeding in the, and if, I mean, uh, as I can remember, uh, this uh, indication slide has two slides, absolute indication is, uh, I mean, 20 WBCT is the test done. And if there is obvious systemic bleeding, don't waste 20 minutes time, give it. And if there is a severe swelling in a digit, if there is profuse pain abdomen, if the patient is vomiting a lot, if there is hypotension, if there is arrhythmia, then we cannot get enough time to uh, wait for 20 minutes. So if we think that already this myocardial injury is there because of this toxin, in, I mean, venom induced, and if there is other systemic hypotension is already there, then it is not a panic attack or an I mean, anxiety symptom. Then we can think of that, that. So there are actually two slides. Initially, this absolute indication, and next one is, which is not absolutely indications cannot be documented and can be seen. So if it is local limb nodes are severely inflamed, this digital involved swelling is there because we should not want to lose the digit also. So even if we should not wait for 20 minutes, we can give the fast dose and we can go for these other things. So these are the minor exceptions. Severe pain abdomen is always a harbinger of these major systemic envenomation features. So if there is severe pain abdomen, severe vomiting, severe hypotension, arrhythmia, then we can go for this ASB and we should we may not wait for this 20 minutes because these are the other features of systemic envenomation. But we should be convinced that there are features of systemic envenomation. Only the local features of local swelling, we cannot just have adequate suspicion and we should not waste this ASB. If there is a local swelling, suppose the bite is there and there is only a local swelling. It is not crossing over the joint, it is not rapid, it is the other things, then we should not go for it, we should wait for time. So suspicion has to be, I mean, uh, corroborative with this protocol, just mere suspicion or a subjective variation will not actually allow to give this ASB in every situation. So suspicion must have a, I mean, basis of science and uh, have a support with the protocol. At the point about the pregnant patient, uh, it may mimic a preeclampsia. So, how do you? Uh, what should be your special focus? No, 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 no. It 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 never uh, mimics. Uh, I mean, preeclampsia because in preeclampsia that causes hypertension, and with this neck varam, it is causes hypotension, and this bleeding is not a feature of eclampsia. Never that can cause this. I mean, uh, convulsion in a to toxemia patient. Here, these neuromuscular junctional problems do not cause I mean, convulsion. So it do not mimic eclampsia. But we are often afraid because there is a baby, but it is a free flowing venom. It is like the titration of acid and alkali, which have done in our biochemistry class in the very first year. It is almost like that. And if there is a free flowing venom, if the patient is pregnant, we should not just wait for more because the patient is pregnant. We should save the life of two, the baby and the fetus, and the protocol is the same. Uh, uh, any comments about the small molecule oral drugs that increase the time for administration of ASB uh, that are being uh, licensed? Any views on the on those drugs? Uh, sir, small, I, I, small molecule oral drugs. Any comment on the small molecules oral drugs that can increase the time for administration of ASB? Uh, I have no idea about the oral molecule, sir. Can can you highlight in the uh, next chat box? What is that? Uh, I mean, uh, small molecule oral drugs, because there are two kinds of anti snake venom. Oral drugs uh, do not have much of benefit in this USA, but this ELISA is available. They can have monovalent, I mean, I mean, uh, anti venoms. They can have this mono, mono, monovalent anti venoms for the rattlesnake, for the coral snakes. But it is in our country, it is not possible because most of these countrymen do not know this name, and the doctors even. Do not know about the much about the I mean identification of the snakes uh, because uh, Kote and Gokura may be the same to a medical student because they have not been uh, so much of natural science I mean uh, education from the very early childhood. So in other countries they just took an ELISA test. So ELISA kit says that this is the systemic envenomation of this degree. So neutralization monovalent vaccines I have known about that and that is only for Canada and USA not for the other other states. 
if we read Harrison, in every part, in the footnote, it is for USA and Canada. Never try to, I mean, uh, copy those things in India. Because Bob Norris came here, changed many things. If you go be before the 16th edition of Harrison, you will see many, I mean, crap things in Harrison. And they changed this idea because India is the country where this snake bite is much more because it is a riverine country. It is a large agricultural country. And they learned a lot of things. And I have no idea about the small oral molecules. Eh? I think question has been put by our revered uh, Professor Partho Rai. Sir, you can in the next note, please give me some knowledge about the small molecule oral drugs. I have no idea, sir. Sir, uh, Professor Somitro Ghosh. Sir, sir, sir. Uh, have excellent deliberations from yes, your sir. end and many important tricky points you have cleared. And regarding, I had the same question as of today, whether any oral molecules are being invented or not, that is under research and oral molecules, uh, they have in recent study, they have shown little bit uh, effect and in the years to come, it may be of use in our clinical practice. This is still under uh, investigation now. Phase two trials are going on. Okay, that much I no, sir. I, sir if I if you have some knowledge, then you can uh, just have some highlight on that. <laughs> yeah. no, no, that much I know that that uh, research is going on, and uh, uh, and phase two trials are going on. So, and uh, whatever result has been received from phase two trials, so it is really showing a promise for the future. That much I know. I don't have any details, knowledge at this moment. If anyone else, Professor Shivendu Ghosh is also here if he has any more idea regarding this thing, because I had the same question to put to you. So now it is open to the forum. One interesting question has come. If this Russell's Viper, it is Russell's Viper, not Russell Viper. So both these hemotoxic and neurotoxic features are dominant, present. Then what should be the time interval between the ASB doses? Very interesting question. Because the neurotoxic protocol and the hemotoxic protocol are completely different among the repeat doses. And what should be done if it is neurotoxic and hemotoxic both? So actually, there is no, I mean, highlight on this particular question. But still, in a Russell's Viper, Russell's Viper is predominantly a hemotoxic. And patient is killed by the hemotoxic features, not by the neurotoxic features. So we should be guided by the hemotoxic features only. But if you think that the neurotoxic features are dominant, you can think differently. But it is not possible that the neurotoxic features are dominating over the scenario, but the hemotoxic features are not there. So uh, we can take the neurotoxic uh, supports by neostigmine, uh, atropine, uh, atropine neostigmine combination, and but we should follow the protocol of the hemotoxic bite because Russell's viper is characteristically known for his hemotoxic bite. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, I have got only some comment about this Valles Pladib and other uh, 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 medicines. DMPS. Hmm. Yeah, so for the which can metalloproteinase uh, can be inhibited. But the problem in our country, the trial is not over. And still, I should say, it is again the uh, NRI, I mean, the uh, non Indians that they are dominating in the management protocol of oral therapy of snake venom. But still now the balance is like this, that you have to give ASB, only thing that the time that is being taken by the patient relation to go to a hospital, you can try this. And it is being tried at least in one medical college in uh, Kolkata, that is National Medical College but it is being monitored by U.S. people. And there are plenty of works by Oxford people in Nicole and others that oral therapy can have a very good role until unless the patient gets ASB. So still now, it's a supplementation of the protocol that is going on. And if it is available freely in the market or in the hospital, then and then it can have an impact on our health system in snake bite patient. That is my idea about this valles pladib and other metalloprotein inhibitors.
Uh, I think uh, more or less all questions are answered. Uh, that is more or less basically the questions are repeated. Um, thank you, thank you, uh, Professor Shobhita Ghosh. Uh, really, it is a very nice discussion about the snake bite. And you have mentioned all the aspects of the snake bite. Now I hand over the microphone to our uh, president or chairman of ICP West Bengal, Dr. Amal Kumar Banerjee. Thank you, both uh, Ghosh and Shomitra Ghosh, Ghosh family, for their excellent deliberation on a very clinical, clinical issue. Now, I request Dr. Orishankar Pathok, who is the chairman of API West Bengal, to give a vote of thanks. Uh, at the outset, I thank uh, Dr. Amol Kumar Banerjee, our uh, chairman of ICB Forum West Bengal, for giving me this opportunity to give a vote of thanks. In fact, uh, uh, the talk by Professor Sumitra Ghosh has been marvelous. Many things which were not clear to us at this age or at this age became clear today, particularly regarding postmortem. I thank him for my core of heart. The, the role of chairman has been excellent. He has managed uh, uh, the total uh, discussion and uh, uh, regarding question and answer session, he has managed very well. I also thank all participants regarding their uh, beautiful questions and the number of participation today. I and thank uh, all, including uh, Professor uh, Partho Karmakar, Professor Samitra, uh, 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 our uh, Shivendu Ghosh and all the others, we know. Uh, 